rises for decent living wage as federal government inaugurates tripartite committee on national minimum wage. As broadcasters converge on Abuja, the rights of the fourth estate of the realm came into focus. And justice for Sierra Leonean Vice President, Epo's court declares his removal unconstitutional. Hello and thanks for joining us on NTN Network News. Reading with me tonight from Lagos is Ademola Adeoye and in Sokoto is Sadia Umar Digi. And in Benin, Ogochukuka Ona will be our guide. President Mohamed Buhari has directed the immediate payment of the balance of the Paris Club refund to the states to enable them pay outstanding salary arrears to workers before Christmas. The president gave the directive at an interactive meeting with members of the Nigerian Governors Forum. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. I always feel you are white, so I wore white for you. Very good. I like it. You are surprised. I put a neutral color. It was a warm and engaging atmosphere as President Muhammad Buhari exchanged banters with members of the Nigeria Governors Forum at the meeting, led by the chairman of the forum and governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar. The governors are here to show appreciation to the president for the harmonious and highly beneficial working relations between his administration and all the state government's party affiliation notwithstanding. The governors equally commend President Buhari for providing effective leadership and guidance that resulted in getting Nigeria out of recession within a short time. The president is, however, more concerned about the plight of the state government workers that have been owed salaries for months. And this formed the basis of his discussions with the governors behind closed doors. After the meeting, Governor Rochas Okorocha of Imo State told newsmen that the president has directed the immediate payment of the balance of the Paris Club refund to the states to enable them meet their obligations to workers before Christmas. The issue of uh, workers took the center stage because Mr. President very much concerned about those who depend on their salary to feed their families and pay their house rent. And we had the assurance of governors that we're going to meet up those. And uh, with the Paris Club coming, that every state must ensure that salaries, workers get their salary to enable them to enjoy the Christmas. My state has no salary arrears at all. Okay, so it's, it's a mute issue. Kano doesn't have any salary arrears. It's a mute issue. Whatever we're getting, we'll just continue our development projects. Some states have salary arrears bigger than what they are getting as Paris Club reform. So even when they get it, they will not be able to clear all the arrears. But, but think, it is better to reduce, at least people will have happier Christmas than nothing at all. The amount to be paid is the balance of the first 50% of the Paris Club refund. And as the figures for the remaining 50% of the refund are being reconciled, the governors made a case for its conclusion in good time so that the amount due to their respective states should form part of their 2018 budgetary estimates. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari says the Nigerian worker as a vital element in national growth and development must not be subjected to poverty and pain, but rather be encouraged to live above the basic social protection floor by his or her employer, no matter the circumstances. The president stated this while inaugurating the Trapatite Committee on the National Minimum Wage as part of his administration's commitment towards ensuring fairness and decency in the living standard of the nation's workforce. Here again is State House correspondent Adam Musambo with the details. The 30 man tripartite committee on the national minimum wage, comprising federal and state government representatives, private sector employers, and the organized labor, is responsible for negotiating the new national minimum wage for workers in Nigeria. We are gathered here today to address issues concerning the welfare of the Nigerian worker. President Muhammad Buhari, who described the committee as all encompassing, expressed the hope that the outcome of the negotiations will be consensual and generally acceptable. I therefore urge you to amicably consider the issue of a national minimum wage and all matters that are ancillary to it with thoroughness and concern, not only for the welfare of our workforce, but the effect 
of the country's economy. Accordingly, we should aim to go above the basic social protection flow for all Nigerian workers based on the ability of each tier of government to pay. He said the minimum wage is a compensation for hard work by employees and therefore must be anchored on equity and social justice. I therefore enjoin you all to collectively begin in good faith, have mutual recognition for each other and always in a spirit of give and take. Labor and Employment Minister Chris Ngige described the event as a remarkable step towards fulfilling the Buhari administration's promise of providing palliative measures to cushion the effect of the implementation of what it called appropriate pricing for petroleum products in 2016. It's a tripartite uh, negotiation. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, everybody is coming to the table uh, with a uh, broad mind, no hard position because we should also look at the economy. The Tripartite National Minimum Wage Committee is chaired by the former head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Ama Pepo. Mr. President said he wants a situation where the matter will be settled and the, lab, uh, the workers will be happy. And that is what we too will endeavor to do in the committee. So they should be hopeful. President Muhammadu Buhari, consistent with all the promises he has and assurances you have given to the Nigerian people have yet again today taken a step towards the evolution of a national minimum wage that will be for the best interest of the Nigerian economy and people. It's a wonderful day for Nigerian workers. It's a wonderful day for the labor movement. And we pray that the committee will work assiduously like the president has said as soon as possible to put forth its report so that Nigerian workers can at least enjoy a living wage. It is true that we have made a formal demand of 56,000 naira, both TUC and NLC and organized labor, we have made that demand. And our hope is that uh, we should be able to have a minimum wage in no distant time that can be able to address many of the challenges of workers because of the fact that uh, the purchasing power certainly have gone really down. Although no time frame was given for the assignment, the committee's recommendations will result into setting in motion all the requisite machinery for the implementation of the new national minimum wage, including appropriate legislative scrutiny for illegal backing. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Well, on the other hand, the agriculture sector has continued to receive tremendous interest from the federal government with much hope on the sector to diversify their economy. This was also the case at the 6th Presidential Quarterly Business Forum held in Abuja, which aimed at resolving some identified challenges such as funding and loans to smallholder farmers. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi tells us more. The federal government has been taking giant strides in its diversification program of the economy, and these leading to the nation beginning to take a comfortable seat. Among these sectors, agriculture has made some progress in recent years, as noted with the launch of Anchor Borrowers Program, the development of the green alternative to create domestic food security and grow food for exports by decisively resolving constraints in the agri sector. The president has directed that we set up a small uh, committee to look at intervention funds in agriculture. It's clear that we're not going to be able to bring down interest rates overnight. You know, there's no question that that's not just going to happen by any kind of fiat. So the way out, of course, is by some kind of intervention arrangement. And that's really what uh, the president has asked uh, that we do. At the sixth meeting of the Presidential Quarterly Business Forum, participants reviewed the agricultural business landscape from the perspective of the small older farmers in an outgrower model and from that of a larger agro-processing export business. Smuggling is a serious threat uh, to our entire economy. And uh, Mr. President has asked that uh, we take a look at this and see what to do. The meeting also considered the outstanding policy opportunities that exist to support the actors, including improving access to finance, the role of the Bank of Agriculture, and the new mechanisms to support export expansion grants. 
people don't know that a lot of things is going on and that it is something that will start manifesting down the road as we go on. The amount of work that is being done now in preparing for, for export and other things is massive. The diversification effort of the government is yielding good results. A lot of people are now going into farming. The Presidential Quarterly Business Forum is an opportunity for the economic management team to interact with members of the private sector from the conference center of the State House. Jide Onifade, NT News. And to other matters now, the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice has declared the removal of Sierra Leonean Vice President Samuel Samsumana as unconstitutional. The court also ordered the government to pay all outstanding entitlements of the vice president from the day of his removal in 2015 to date. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu has details. The three-man panel of the ECOWAS court observed that the Austin vice president of Sierra Leone was denied fair hearing, an exercise of human right in the crisis that led to his removal. They said even though the country's constitution gives the president the powers to remove and replace vice president in the event of constitutional breach, but must be done in line with the provision of the constitution. The governing All People's Congress Party, APC, had earlier expelled Mr. Sam Sumana in 2015, accusing him of fueling violence that led to his eventual removal as vice president. It's about the integrity of the Sierra Leonean state and the rule of law, which says that a president cannot get up one fine morning and just dismiss his vice president. So for us, that was the most important reason why our client came to the ECOWAS court. And that reason has been fulfilled. But I resolved that my country is bigger than me. And I resolved that I have to give peace a chance, that instead of my people have to run again, like they did in the 90s, I will go and seek justice for them and restore the dignity of Sierra Leone by bringing back the constitutionalities of our country. The three-man panel also noted that the party's constitution gives 30 days room for appeal, which was denied, as they refused him the opportunity to defend himself of the allegations. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliyaku, NTA News. As they stay with matters of the region, President Muhammad Buhari will tomorrow, 28th and Wednesday, 29th of November, attend the 5th European and African Union EU-AU Summit in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. The theme of this summit is investing in the youth for sustainable development. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, said the President will use the occasion of the summit to reiterate Nigeria's readiness to work with African and European countries to address the challenges affecting both continents in terms of peace and security. According to the statement, if the three heads of state representing 55 African countries and 28 European countries are scheduled to attend the summit. Aquaibom and Bauchi state's governors with some ministers among government officials to accompany the president to Cote d'Ivoire. Up ahead, broadcasting organizations of Nigeria and a pledge of appropriate content. Stay with us after this break. Mobile technology used to be for the rich, but then one company made it affordable to all Nigerians and pioneered per second billing. As the nation accelerated into the future, data became the new currency. But at what cost? Glow is offering unmatched data values, giving you the unfair advantage. 100 Naira now gives you 90 megabytes. 200 Naira, 250 megabytes. 500 Naira, 2 gigabytes. 1,000 Naira, 4 gigabytes. 2,500 Naira, 12.5 gigabytes. 5,000 Naira, 30 gigabytes. By using their massive, world-class infrastructure, Glow delivers high-quality, affordable data that benefits everyone. The power is in your hands. What you choose to do with it is up to you. Dial star 777 hash, the largest data network 
Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, hereby informs the general public that shareholders that are yet to register for the ongoing free e-dividend registration should approach their banks or registrars to mandate the bank accounts for the collection of their dividend electronically, including unclaimed dividends not exceeding 12 years of issue. The free registration sponsored by SEC closes on 31st December 2017. Furthermore, investors that bought shares of the same company during public offers using different names are given in forbearance up till 31st December 2017 to approach their stockbrokers or registrars to regularize their shareholdings in line with the Securities and Exchange Commission's rules on customer identification. Thereafter, all shares not regularized shall be transferred on trust to the Capital Market Development Fund. These are part of the Securities and Exchange Commission's initiative to further improve investors' benefit and confidence in the Nigerian capital market. Welcome to Zamfara, where opportunities meet commitment. The more than six years of Abdul Aziz Abubakar Yari, the people's governor, reflects new dawn, new opportunities, progress, new hope, and of course, the transformed Zamfara state. Education, health, roads, water supply, and road transformation. Name it. Abdul Aziz Yari leads for orders to follow. His vision and mission tied around implementing the President Buhari's change to Zamfara people. Carry on, the people's governor. Zamfara, the pride of the nation. This message is brought to you by Arewa Media Group. Ninja Dot Logistics and Support Base is a leading provider of oil field based services located at Snake Island Integrated Free Zone, Lagos, Nigeria. We have full port status and comprehensive supply base capabilities. Niger Dock employs over 5,000 personnel and operates 24 7 days a week. We have a proud, world class safety culture and a globally recognized track record with the oil and gas industry. Niger Dock. Proudly Nigerian. Woke up early morning, heard the winning numbers, baby. Talk to Prima, got me feeling like a winner, honey. Every step I take makes the whole world come alive. Just a hundred naira and I came up as a winner. Makes me wanna shout, makes me wanna do what you can. Talk to Prima, got my back and now I, I feel, feel alive. alive. a dream that should be Totti Prima. Join the Totti Prima family and start winning. Simply buy a hundred naira ticket from any Totti Prima vendor or visit www.tottiprimalotto.com.ng. Totti Prima. Dream. Win. This is the game I've been waiting for and I get a headache. But I remembered mom's advice. When headache strikes, I always trust Sudrex because Sudrex acts fast to relieve headaches. Sudrex, win your day. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. OLED TV. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant. To achieve our creed as we promise, we shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country just a week crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace.
peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Win a share of 100 million naira with Malta Guinness. Find your code. SMS it with your name to 32011. 1 million naira plus cash and airtime prizes to be won every week. Malta Guinness. Let's go. Modern family planning methods are safe and effective. You and your partner can plan when to have a child. Talk to your partner. Let them know you support using a modern family planning method. Go! Get a modern family planning method today. There's a method that is right for you and your partner. No. no. Talk. Go. Get, get it together. together. Get, get it together, together for a brighter, brighter future. future. This Get It Together campaign is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health. <laughs> Glad to have you back on the news. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the media is right to criticize the present administration but should not engage in mockery of its achievements. The minister said this while declaring open the 68th General Assembly of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. Putting the fight against corruption in the front burner, the minister appeals to the media. He said it is unthinkable for them to fold their arms and not join the federal government in combating corruption rather than resort to mocking its achievements. In recent times, it is not unusual to read such headlines as Buari's government losing anti-corruption war. Buari's anti-corruption war is failing. Early values knock President Buari over failing anti-corruption uh, anti war. This is sheer mockery, not reporting. And this war is not Buari's war. It is our war. Stressing the need for all to join in the fight, the minister linked all the challenges facing the country today to corruption. Yes, corruption is fighting back, and furiously too. But it cannot match the courage, determination, and the commitment of this administration. Nor can it dampen the leadership of President Mohamed Buari. It does not matter what you say. You may not like him, but nobody can say Mr. President is corrupt. His impeccable and legendary integrity puts him in a good stead to lead the war against corruption. The EFCC is determined to ensure that anyone who steals from the public treasure and all those who assist them to do so under whatever guise are brought to justice. The National Broadcasting Commission has also taken a very strongly proactive position against the broadcast of hate and dangerous speech in Nigerian broadcasting. Content is king, far more than a cliche, but a substance and material of quantity and quality. As an expression of creativity, human rights and aspirations, content will remain what our audiences will consume. The Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria is the umbrella organization of public and privately owned broadcasting stations in the country. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. In the meantime, the fourth estate of the realm has resolved to work out modalities that will improve members' welfare towards the fight against corruption. This was at the 68th General Assembly of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, BUN. At Double at Brooklyn Sunday, what's there? I brought back this report. From all parts of the country, these media chief executives converged in unison to deliberate on their role in the fight against corruption. Yusuf Nadabo Usman is one of the executives of Bonn. He is particular about the safety and protection of journalists. The government should be able to at least ensure the journalist properly. So much so that no matter what happens to your family, you could be able to say, okay, that for this and that, if at all it gets to that level. None or delay in payment of salaries, observers say, exposes some of the practitioners to corruption. If truly there are our colleagues 
who do engage in such practices just because they are not being paid is very wrong. If we as media practitioners we are going to contribute effectively towards winning this war against corruption, we've got to go and sort ourselves out first. Chairman of the organization says there is a solution to all the challenges facing the industry. Uh, well, there's a bill that we're sending to the House and Senate for uh, passage, which is the Nigerian Society of Broadcasters, so that we can professionalize you know, ourselves and, and then we can now regulate ourselves. And anybody who is found wanting you know, can, can, can go under the law. Born was established in 1973. Information they say is power, and as information disseminators, their maximum cooperation on the fight against corruption will no doubt fast track the winning of the war. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And to the legislature now, in spite of the demands of medical doctors in Nigeria, the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, MDCN, was only able to register 200 out of 700 foreign trained medical doctors. For this irregularity, the Senate has resolved to invite the acting registrar of the council, Dr. Tajuddin Sanusi, to clear the air on this anomaly as well as answer questions on various petitions against him bordering on impropriety. National Assembly correspondent Denis Adegunle tells us about it. The petitions border on allegations of a ploy to undermine foreign trained doctors and that irregularities that characterized the entire process of the Medical Dental Council of Nigeria's examination from registration to writing the exam were questionable. Acting Registrar of the Council, Dr. Tajuddin Sanusi, was not present at the investigative hearing and members of the Senate Committee on Health, led by the Chairman on Larry Waju Tejosho were dismayed at this given the seriousness of the allegations and the lack of medical doctors in Nigeria. We, in the Senate, decided to take these petitions very seriously because we need doctors in our hospitals at this time. He needs to come and answer for himself all the various allegations levied against him. The acting registrar is expected to appear before the committee on Thursday, 30th of November from the National Assembly Dennis at Digan Louie, NTA News. And still from the National Assembly, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says the ministry has mouthed out federal roads that needs urgent attention in Nigeria. The minister, who was speaking before the Senate Committee on Federal Road Maintenance Agency, also said the ministry is repositioning FEMA to meet with their responsibility of effective road maintenance across the country. National Assembly correspondent Ifanye Zumba reports. In spite of the backlog of road construction and maintenance projects spread across the country, inherited by the Buhari administration, a lot has been achieved on road infrastructure with a lot of roads needing urgent attention, which already work is undergoing. To ensure the efficient and effective maintenance of all existing federal trunk roads. Team Managing Director FEMA said full cash backing from budgetary provision to FEMA is of paramount importance towards attaining its set objectives. We have done a compilation of critically damaged sections of the federal highway network across the nation and check them out with the data from the Federal Road Safety Code. Chairman Senate Committee on FEMA, appreciating the workload of the ministry and FEMA, said quality assurance should be priority. In parts of Kogi, there are places where we had to go into the bush and use some other roads as part of the journey that we're making to get from Abuja to Elisha. If you say that you will leave those roads because they are not federal roads, the people who still suffer are Nigerians. Chairman also emphasized that accident on the road could be reduced through attitudinal change from the National Assembly. Ifang Isumba. And still on the road infrastructure in Nigeria, the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe and the Federal Road Safety Car is to train stakeholders in the transport sector in line with the 1968 Convention on Road Signs and Signals. The exercise slated to take place in Abuja will have participants drawn from the 36 states of the country. Joseph Rock reports that pursuant to this, the training team visited the secretary to the government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa for government support. Road signs are erected at the site or above roads to give instructions or provide information to road users. The just concluded Federal Road Safety Corps 7th International Anniversary Lecture Series 
emphasized the need for Nigeria to implement the United Nations Road Safety Legal Instruments. Based on this, the Federal Road Safety Corps solicited and secured the United Nations Facilitators for Capacity Building Program. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, hopes that the training will equip participants with requisite skills in line with international standards. And one of the publications that I've just received from the leader of the delegation is the attempt of the United Nations to cut down deaths and injuries on the roads by 2020. And you know that that's a major concern in this country. When you travel the Nigerian roads, you can see the level of fatality that happens on, on, on a daily basis. This is of the UN Special Envoy in August. Mm -hmm. The Secretary to the Government Federation discussed the issue of capacity building, one, to see to the completion of the six UN conventions on road science, which Nigeria has not domesticated. The other one is also to train all our directors of highways. The capacity building is targeted at equipping transport stakeholders on basic knowledge to enhance safety on the road. About 200 participants are expected in the training program. Joseph Orok, NTA News. Let's now go over to Lagos, where Ademola is standing by with more reports from that zone. Hello, Ademola. You look regal tonight. Thank you, Isaac. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. The fashion art fusion in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture showcased Nigeria's fashion, culture and arts at an exhibition tagged Wear Nigeria. The event featured many creative aspects of Made in Nigeria products. Imole Ayo Tokede has the details. The Fashion Art Fusion showcased Afrocentric creativity of Nigeria's top designers and artists. They include Ashoke made in various designs and styles. Talent that popularly known as Adire was also on display. The Fashion Art Fusion, which was meant to encourage and promote made in Nigeria wares, was a display of creativity and talent that abound in the fashion industry. We can also use this Ashoke to make a pants, to make bomber jackets. These are Western designs that we really want to, and we can also express our feelings with our own local fabric. The event was a Ministry of Information and Culture's way of promoting made in Nigeria goods. The Minister of Information and Culture was represented by the Zonal Director of NTA Lagos Network Center, Mr. Chidi Uluka, said, Promoting Nigeria fashion industry will bring the Nigerian fashion to the limelight, as well as attract foreign exchange to the country, while Nigerians in the diaspora will appreciate them. When we now promote our own culture, especially our fashion, and a lot of people appreciate it. Uh, even the white people appreciate our own fabric, our own style, our own culture. The organizer of the event expansions. Every year we try to support and encourage different medical NGOs. This year is with cerebral palsy in trying to bring the challenges they face to the fore with our project, with our project Fashion Art Fusion. The fashion show attracted various stakeholders. In Lagos, Imole Ayotokidi, NTA News. Individuals and corporate organizations in the country have been challenged to initiate laudable projects that will positively impact on the society as part of their contribution to humanity. These were the responses from award recipients at the new Telegraph 2017 Awards held in Lagos. Ken Igbeluhe has the report. The edition of the new Telegraph Award attracted dignitaries from all walks of life. The award was recognition of outstanding contributions of a few Nigerians and some private sector players in their chosen field of endeavor. It was also to reward personalities and institutions that have demonstrated excellence in the drive to make Nigeria a great nation. There are always good men and women in Nigeria who hold the nation by the hand through the gloom onto a better place. The award is have all developed excellence as a habit and evolved it from little matters. Today, excellence is their life. They live it, they use it, they manifest it, they personify it. They have achieved excellence in big things, hence this deserve recognition. 
The Minister of Information and Culture, represented by the Zonal Director NT Lagos Network Centre, re echoed the need for Nigerians to cultivate the culture of hard work as it pays. And when you give somebody an award, mostly a quality award, like the type is, that is coming from New Telegraph, it will spur the person to work harder and to improve on his performance. Prominent Nigerians and corporate organizations received various awards. The New Telegraph newspaper player is trade in news, business, politics, arts, law, education, and health in Lagos. Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this time out. Stay with us. Hello, Everyday Bonanza. Over two and a half thousand winners have already emerged nationwide. With tens of thousands of prizes still up for grabs, don't miss your chance in the recharge and win. Glow everyday bananas. My name is Tani Mushishi. I'm always recharged every day. I didn't believe. I don't receive the call that ah, I want the car from Glow. Season's greetings from FCMB, my bank and I. Success. I always wanted to make something of myself. Even when I was a child. With So Clean, my mother made sure that my clothes were clean and bright. With a 30% concentrated formula, washing is faster, brighter, and cleaner. Like millions of families, mine also trusts So Clean. With my clothes and with my career. Because when all eyes are on you, you have to look the part. So clean. It's your time to shine. So clean. Now with a new look and stain magnet technology for even better stain removal. Glow Everyday Bonanza. Over two and a half thousand winners have already emerged nationwide. With tens of thousands of prizes still up for grabs, don't miss your chance in the recharge and win. Glow everyday bananas. My name is Tani Mushishi. I'm always recharged every day. I didn't believe. I don't receive the call that ah, I want the car from Glow. The tastiest blue done with vitamins A, D, E, B6, B12, folic acid, and niacin. Important for kids' growth and development. You can tell they're from a blue band home. Spread every slice and give your kids the vitamins they need. Come join us. Mom says we have more than enough. Wherever you may travel, whoever you will be with, we wish you a supreme Christmas. Be supreme, Nigeria. Not all washing powders are the same. Sunlight adds bursts of freshness to cleaning power to give you sunlight two in one for sensational cleaning and freshness that lasts and lasts and lasts. Sunlight two in one. Sensational cleaning with burst after burst of freshness. Can you see it? Thank you, honey, for being such a blessing to me and our family.
Whenever pain occurs, you want quick relief. Try new Nurofen Express. It goes to the source of pain and gets to work in under 15 minutes. That's why Nurofen Express delivers fast and effective relief. New Nurofen Express. Works at the source of pain. Fast. Being a mom is great, but when your child has a fever, you don't know what to do. I trust Nurofen for Children to take care of my child's pain and fever. Effective relief. You can... It's okay, mommy's here. Pampers Baby Dry, the driest diaper in Nigeria, has a unique extra sleep layer and locks wetness away better. So your baby can sleep soundly all night. Pampers, wishing you love, sleep and play. Thanks for rejoining us in Abuja. Nigeria is set to launch an internet platform for public-private partnership in infrastructure provision. Business News is next with Leah Katung Babatinde. Hello and welcome to Business News at 9. Nigeria will in December launch a web portal that will make all information about public-private partnerships in the country available to investors over the net. This will make the market space more transparent for investment purposes as Nigeria strives to bridge the infrastructure gap which currently stands at an average of 25% ratio to GDP. In view of this, Acting Director General of the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission Chidi Iswa, in an interview with NTA Business News in Abuja, said it has become expedient for Nigeria to ensure the integrated infrastructure master plan works. It enables the private sector to invest. And you do realize we have a huge infrastructure deficit. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's over, you know, billions of, of dollars that we need to spend every year. There isn't enough money from the Treasury to do it. He said for Nigeria to meet the demand of building infrastructure and internationally recognized framework that allows investors come must be in place which inform the idea to make partnership opportunities accessible online as government alone cannot cope with provisions of infrastructure. Now, Fitch Ratings has assigned Nigeria's $1.5 billion denominated 6.5% senior unsecured notes due 28 November 2027 and $1.5 billion 7.625% senior unsecured notes due 28 November 2047, the final rating of B+. The expected rating is in line with Nigeria's long-term foreign currency issuer default ratings IDR of B+, with a negative outlook. The rating is sensitive to any changes in Nigeria's long-term foreign currency IDR. Fisher firmed Nigeria's long-term foreign currency IDR at B+, with a negative outlook on 31 August 2017. The long-term local currency IDR is also B+, with a negative outlook. Now lastly, from the Nigerian equities market, it closed today on a negative note as the NSE All Share Index depreciated by 0.31%. Next is a graphic outlook. Now that is business news for this hour. Thank you for watching. The bulletin will continue in a moment. Thank you, Leah. In the records of University Community Convocation Ceremony is an event every academic student looks forward to. This experience is not different from the Michael Opera University of Agriculture, Umudike, Abia State, as they have their eighth convocation ceremony for the conferment of honorary degrees, admission into higher degrees, postgraduate diploma, and award of first degrees. The Light Njikonye reports. The eighth convocation ceremony of Michael Opera University of Agriculture, Umudike, in Abia State, produced a total number of 4,958 graduates into the labor market. In this number, 98 students met first class. 1,437 go second class upper division. 
2,111 and second class lower division, while others backed to class and pass grade. Vice Chancellor Michael Obra University of Agriculture, Professor Francis Obonaya Otunta said, the university is also marking its 25 years of existence alongside its convocation. He charged the graduates to be good ambassadors as they enter the wider society. A lot of changes have occurred in Michael Opera University of Agriculture in the UK since I assumed office as vice chancellor. Adam State Governor Dr. K. C. Basu commended the management of Michael Opera University for the extra attention they are giving to agriculture. As mother, our desire would have been for Michael Opera University to be available to train all our children irrespective of their academic inclinations and desires. Some distinguished personalities were confirmed with honorary degrees for outstanding performances, while the best graduates in all the disciplines were appreciated. Moro Charles of the Department of Statistics with a cumulative GPA of 4.91 got automatic employment into the university. The traditional ruler of the university host community, Eze Ben Oriako, advised the graduates to be proactive. The fact that you're a graduate today have not made you automatic success. In attendance, we are the Pro Chancellor Muhammad Lawa Zayana and other dignitaries from all walks of life. Delight in Jinkonye, NTA News. We now join Sadia in South Kota for stories making the rounds in that zone. Hello, Sadia. It's over to you. Thank you. Welcome to Sapkoto seat of the Caliphate. The National Youth Service Corps has introduced programs aimed at complementing the federal government's drive to diversify the nation's economy through harnessing available resources for job creation. Director General of the Corps, Brigadier General Suleiman Zakari Kazauri, said that this when he visited the Bwachbi Corps members posted to Sokoto State for National Service. Abdurrahman Usman Jibrila completes the report. The Director General said part of the service plan to complement the efforts of the federal government is the establishment of skills acquisition centers in the six geopolitical zones of the country. He said the NYSC will collaborate with the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Bank of Industry to disburse soft loans to co-members under the project for them to be self-reliant after their service. The scheme is into collaboration with PIGAS and with NDLE. And they are right now in our camps. The PIGAS used to go around the camp to lecture the co-members by telling them the negative aspect of that human trafficking and also the need for them to remain in Nigeria for us to make Nigeria great. Brigadier General Suleiman Zakari Kazaure reminded the co-members on the need for promoting unity and social cohesion in the course of their national service. He called on them to respect the cultures and traditions of the host community. The state coordinator Musa Abubakar told the Director General that the state has registered 2,241 co-members and camp activities have already commenced at the orientation camp in Sokoto. Abraman Usman Jibrila, NTA News. That's all from this end. Back to Abuja for the continuation of Network News. All right, Sadia, thanks. And now, Benin is where we'll go next for the next report with Ogo Chukuka as our under guide. Thank you, Isaac. Welcome to Benin. Victims of the recent rainstorm in Benin are still counting their losses. Agatha Iguarojo reports that property worth millions of naira were destroyed. Days after, areas affected including Saple Road, Aduawa, Orogane Street and Ipoba Hill Axis still wear signs of visible destruction with roof of houses blown off and electricity cables and poles still on the ground. The roof of the main building of NTA Benin Corporate Office on TV Road was also blown off, leaving offices exposed to sun and more damage if it rains again. NTA News captured officers of the BDC fixing electric cables. The people are worried that they are experiencing such downpour accompanied by a storm at this time of the year when they are expecting the dry season. An environmentalist says it is an effect of global warming. For us to have the type of heavy downpour that occurred 
here in Benin City and then the attendant destruction that was caused just goes to show that nature circle had been disbalanced. We can no longer predict. This is not the first time residents would experience such downpour, accompanied by storm destroying property in the last few weeks. Since the last one, many areas in Benin have been thrown into darkness. In Benin, Agatha Egwaruju, NT News. Isaac is back to you for the last lap of the news. Many thanks, Ogo Chukuka in Benin. Up ahead, one will return at spots after this message is stay with us. The judiciary reform, how supportive of the anti-corruption drive. That is our focus on the Tuesday Live this week. It, it promises to be incisive, informative and educating. Tuesday Live, every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Don't miss it. During an emergency, people tend to run away from the scene of danger. My job requires that I do the exact opposite to save people. It's the most fulfilling job I could ever have chosen. It's quite tough. I mean, my son thinks I'm a superhero. Peter is passionate, very committed. He keeps walking out, pushing his body to its limit, but he never breaks. Sometimes I do see he's in pain, but he keeps moving. And people wonder how he does it. I know I can't save the world, but I can save the man in front of me if I walk fast enough. Most of the time, I don't hear from the victims after they've been taken to the hospital. There was once a sweet girl who was in a car accident. It was sad to see pain on her face which would always be smiling. The ordeal had taken a toll on me, but I had no time for pain. There were others who needed help. A couple of weeks later, I was about to head home, and I had an unexpected visitor. It was her birthday, and she had insisted to her mother that she would bring a piece of cake for the man who helped save her life. I will never forget the look of gratitude on her mom's face. The world needs people who save lives. Born in Japan, Ajinomoto is a seasoning used around the world, made from a natural ingredient and goes through the natural method of fermentation. Ajinomoto's distinctive sweetness deepens the taste of your home cooking. Ajinomoto is made for moms who wish to provide lovely and delicious home cooking to their families. Ajinomoto will always maintain a high quality in the future because we know mother's cooking is what strengthens family ties. Umami brings deeper taste, deeper love. And wake up to feeling good. Wake up to feeling good. Glad you stayed. Ilias Ali Yakubu is standing by with stories from across the globe. Austed Zimbabwean Finance Minister Ignatius Chombo charged with three counts of corruption offenses that allegedly took place more than 10 years ago was this Monday denied bail and will remain in custody until his case is heard on December 8. Jumbo, who was among those detained by the Zimbabwean military when it took over power before Robert Mugabe's resignation as president faces charges including trying to defraud the country's central bank. And Sudanese authorities say they have arrested a powerful militia leader, Musa Hilal, suspected of human rights abuses after fighting with the Sudanese forces near his hometown in northern part of Darfur. 
Sudan's Finance Minister, Lieutenant General Ali Mohammed Salim said, the Janjaweed militia leader was arrested alongside his son, Habib. Reports say Musa Hilal is subject to UN sanctions for his suspected incident in the Darfur conflict of the mid-2000. Indonesian authorities have raised the state of alert to its highest level and expanded the exclusion zone around the rumbling volcano. Officials say dark gas and ash have been blowing up to 3,400 meters, about 11,150 feet above the mountain's top. The National Board for Disaster Management have ordered about 100,000 people near Bali's Mount Agung to evacuate due to the possibility and imminent risk of major eruption. Mount Agung's volcanic tremors first began in September. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliyaku, NTA News. And sports update is next with Dengue Sunny. About 500 wrestlers are expected to compete at the Nyesom Wiki Wrestling Championship, which got underway in Portakot River State on Monday. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Governor Nyesom Wiki and the Sports Minister Solomon Dalong said the competition is a prelude to the African Wrestling Championship to be hosted by River State in February 2018. I want to assure the Honorable Minister of Sports that call on River State any day, any time. We will continue to support you to move sports development as far as this country is concerned. In sports, we have decided to return the map of Nigeria within the Committee of Sporting Nations. Following the conclusion of a one-day interstate boxing competition held in Uyo Akwaibom State weekend, participants have called on federal and state government to pay more attention to the development of the sport in the country. 22 boxers from Akwaibom and Cross River State competed in the tournament with the host winning nine gold medals while Cross River State won one gold medal. Director General of Nigerian Television Authority Yakubu Ibn Muhammad has reassured the commitment of the organization to encourage more staff participation in sports in a bid to have a healthy and productive workforce. The DG was speaking while receiving NTA headquarters football team at the management meeting in Abuja Monday after their 2-1 victory over the news agency of Nigeria in the finals of the FCT Sport Writers Association Fafaside football competition. It is a great joy that NTA will always be number one yes. in broadcasting and in every other thing. <laughs> With Sport Update, then this sunny. There we go again, Tim NTA. Now a quick look at the weather forecast for Tuesday.